In recent years, the amount of CO2 released by humans into the planet has approached 40 billion, 40 billion tons. And if you wanted to break that down based on people, well, we've recently crossed 7 billion people on the planet. So that's going to be approximately 7 billion people, 7 billion people times the amount of tons per person. And so if you work out the math, 40 divided by 7, it's going to be roughly 5.7, 5.7 tons per person. Tons per person. And this might already seem like a lot. You could imagine 5.7 tons of wood just being burned. Actually, it would have to be much more than 5.7 tons of wood because wood contains some water. Uh, but it's even, it's even more than that because, or at least for many of y'all watching, it's going to be a lot more than that because that's the average of the developed and the developing world. And it turns out that the average person in the developed world, so developed, developed average, or if you're a wealthy person or a middle class person in even the developing world, your average is going to be closer to 20 tons. 20 tons per person per year. And in the developing world, or if you're not as wealthy of a person, or you're living in a rural place and you're not using a car to get to where you are, need to get to, or your house doesn't have electricity, so the poor, the poor are, are using closer to one ton of CO2 per person per year. And so this already, when you even see this dynamic, it leads to something interesting. The number of people on the planet is only likely to increase. And we can see that. We have a little chart here from, based on data from the UN. I know the numbers here are a little bit small. It starts in 1800 and it goes all the way to 2100. And the blue are the actuals. If you want to see where we are right now, so we are not quite at 2020 yet. So we're going to be roughly right over there. That's where we are right now. We've recently crossed 7 billion people. And if you wanted to see where, where these UN predictions have us for 2050, 2050 is right over here. And so you can see the high UN prediction has us getting to a world population of about 10.5 billion. The median prediction has us crossing 9 billion. This looks like a little bit, you know, maybe it's like 9.3, 9.4 billion. And then the low prediction still has the population increasing a bit, and us crossing 8 billion people worldwide. So this number is clearly going to increase. And so, and you can also imagine, we want it to happen, that more people uh, get out of poverty, that they are able to use to have more goods and services. And so in that case, well, they might be using more energy. And if we don't change how we produce that energy, well, this has the potential of really going up a lot, which could make this number go up a lot. And to help us think about that a little bit more, uh, Bill Gates gave his famous TED Talk a couple of years ago, where he talked about his energy equation. And it's a pretty straightforward equation. It talks about the total sum of CO2 emissions. So this is the capital Greek letter sigma right over here. It's shorthand, math, math shorthand for sum. So the annual sum of CO2 emissions, and so that's that 40 billion number that I was talking about before. Well, you can derive this in any given year by taking the product of several things. First, you can think about the world's population, P. And I'll even call that the average population because the population is changing. So the average population in a year. Average population in a year. And then you can multiply that times the amount of services on average each person is using per year. So let me say, so times the services, times the services. Let me write that down. The average services, average average services per person, per, per person. And really we could say average services and goods because we're talking about things that are, that, are, that are going to need energy. And any good or service pretty much that you look around is going to need energy for you to consume. There's some of the obvious things like transportation. Obviously you know, your car might consume some fuel, uh, needs energy to do that. 
Uh, but even watching this video, I'm consuming energy producing this video for you. I had to, to, to eat some food, some energy, which is, which is the reason I eat it is for energy, and some energy was, was needed even to produce that food to get it to my table. You are, I'm using electricity on my computer right now. You would have to use electricity to consume this video. So there's a lot more energy being used in the goods and services you consume than you might realize. So then you want to take, remember, we want to get to the total sum of CO2. You multiply that times the average energy per service. Or you could say per, per good or service consumed. So average, I'll just say services. Average energy, average energy per service. Per service, I'll just write the word per. So per, per service. Right over there, as I said, almost any service you use, you 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 consume is using some energy. When you go to school, your your teacher, he or she is consuming energy uh, to to just be alive. They had to eat some food. They had to use transportation to get there. Your classroom might be heated or it might be cooled in some way. And then finally, to get us to the sum of CO2 released in in a year, we have to multiply by we have to multiply by. Let me do that in that the color I'm using for the CO2. We have to multiply that times the CO2, CO2 released, released per unit of energy. Per unit of energy. And so you can, you, we can think about how all of these dynamics are going to change, but if we ever want this thing on the left to get to zero, and unless it gets to zero, uh, things like global warming are only going to get worse. In order for that to get to zero, and you're taking the product of four things, at least one of these things have to be zero. That's the only way that you're going to get a product to be zero. And we can look at each of, these, each of these elements of the energy equation and think about what they are likely to do. The average world population, well, we see what's going on here. There's even the median prediction has the population growing by roughly 30%. So we could say, look, this is going to increase. This is going to increase by, by a factor of 1.3. It's going to increase by roughly 30%. Once again, these are all predictions. This is all very rough, but we can think directionally where things are going. Now, average goods and services, or average services per person. Well, we want the poor to be able to consume more. Now, maybe you know some of us in the developed world, maybe we consume a little bit too much. Uh, that's you know that's a philosophical thing for for folks to debate. But on average, we want the world to we want more people to have uh, better transportation, better access to healthcare, better access to education, better access to to leisure. And so this is likely to go up. In fact, this will go up as the world goes richer. And some of the predictions, and this is what was, I, I believe, what Bill cited in his uh, TED talk, was that this could go up by a factor of two. This could go up by a factor of two. And this is good. We want the world to become richer. We want more people to consume goods and services. Now, the average energy per service. Well, the good thing is technology is making things more efficient. And so we might have better insulation, uh, uh, better efficient uh, engines, uh, whether they're electric engines or, or, or some other type of fuel engines. And so the average energy per service is likely to go down. And depends on how optimistic you are, it could go down by 20%, uh, and depending on your time frame, 50%. And some even more optimistic predictions might be even more than 50%. So it's going to go down. So let's just say this is times, let's just see 0.5. Let's just be optimistic. But even if you were to multiply this, you know, just 1.3 times 2, that's a factor of 2.6. And even if you were to take that by half, you still have this, this entire product increasing. And even if we were to get really efficient, if we were to, if we were to increase, if we were to, if we were to decrease our energy used per service by 80% or, or even 90%, you still have many tens of billions of tons of CO2 being released every year. So the only way that we're going to be able to get that this thing down to zero if is if is if C right over here, the CO2 released per unit of energy goes to zero. Needs. So this needs to go to zero. Which is a fairly uh, bold thing to say because we're nowhere close to that right now. But if we're serious about this, 
it's possible that humanity can get there. There are energy sources that 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 are that don't release CO2 or get pretty close to being at zero. And just to be clear, even if you're driving an electric car, you have to think about where does that electricity come from? If if that electricity was generated using say something like coal, well that's going to release CO2 or if it was if it was generated using natural gas, that is going to release carbon into the atmosphere. And so you need to think about you need to think about even if you're using something like an electric uh, uh, motor, how is that electricity actually produced? And you have energy sources like nuclear. Nuclear has its own set of issues that we think about like safety and and what you do with the waste, but people are working on things like clean burning nuclear that are much safer and that generate a, a, a very small fraction of of the waste. Uh, you have all your other renewable sources of energy, but this is a big challenge for humanity. If we want this thing on the left to be zero, if we want to uh, go if we if we want to slow if we want to or stop the the heating of the planet uh, we have to figure out how to do this and you know the general sense is is if as a civilization we put our minds to it that 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 we can do it.